Howdy, everybody. I think I'm in the right place here. This is Freeman Sullivan Clark. We're at Stater Gate in Berkeley, California, on the campus of the University uh, for Extinction Rebellion. Thank you. Calling this the most important issue that's out there. You know, I go to all the different uh, protests. Uh, it says here that uh, California has the power to change the future. With the fifth largest economy in the world, which is true. Uh, University of California. I wonder if they have any money invested in the... Uh, I think that they divested all the fossil fuel companies and they were pushed to do it that way uh, by students here in the AS, the student union. So I don't quite know what's going to happen here, but it looks like there's going to be a march, maybe. And it's a beautiful day. And I'm glad if you're watching. It's hard for me to see on the screen here. It's like, you know, I'd have to turn it all the way up and then I wouldn't be able to, my batteries would die quickly. But it is beautiful out here. And looks like you're going to get block a little Sather Gate action here. Um, it's wondering if there is any civil disobedience. How are you doing there, Mohammed? Moving a little closer. Students, I want to. There's a climate emergency, the signs are saying around here. Anyway, uh, the demands are pretty simple. Uh, we demand the California state government declare a climate emergency, commit to eliminating fossil fuels so we can reach net zero carbon emissions by 2025. Number three, empower communities through a citizens' assembly. And number four, create a just transition that focuses on solutions from frontline communities. And uh, if you want to follow uh, the hashtag or the actually uh, the Facebook page, uh, it's Extinction Rebellion SF. And uh, they have a website called xrsfa.org. And this group is at XR Berkeley. So, uh, if you want to keep up, I'll uh, listen to the comments a little bit later. Anyway. Right, God just happened to walk by with this. Not the God you think of. Not the God I think of. Some of the signs here. Planet over dollars. Well, it's really bright out here. I'm doing my best to keep everything framed. A solid moment. The University of Berkeley used to be famous for taking the system to task. Famous, the most famous university in the world. They shut down for, for 40 days. The students walked out against the Vietnam War. The black students over in UCSF, they walked out for four months. The Hispanics down south did the same thing for two months. There have been a lot of student strikes. And here they are doing a die-in to show you that we become spiritually dead. We need to be awake. You got more power than any of the students in the world. Right now, in Japan, right now in India, in Kashmir, the students are taking the system to task. It's about power. It's about love. And we're being diffused by illusions. For the deceptions are great, and the illusions are greater still. Just like blaming pg e for the fires. The fires were commanded from on high. And so too are the earthquakes that will be here by a, a breath within this full moon. And uh, when the earthquakes right hit, look to the sky, and you will Thank see you. 
Appreciate it. It's not that I'm supposed to fire. I just can't have stuff hanging here. off the chair. I am here speaking truth to power, free of all fear. The power is with the students to join into an action that shuts down the system. Yeah, that's the system is dead. The Go ahead. I'm not interrupting. Don't interrupt me. Go ahead, interrupt me. The power is with the students. It always has been. Student strikes are going on everywhere around the world, except in the most powerful place, which is California. What does that have to do with synthetic telepathy? Is it really mind control that maintains a subservient, acquiescent population? Absolutely. You will see the earthquakes. You will see the chariots of fire. It is so. It is done. And there's more people to train. Kind of on your side. Your first name? A pleasure to treasure without measure. Will you humor, will you humor me with three th pictures that verify? This one verifies the fire of the commander. They were not by PTV. This was said in 2017. Yeah, sorry for that. I got. Somehow I pressed the wrong button. Easy to do in this. Because I can barely see the screen. <laughs> but. We're going to have some students speak. That's what I want to hear. Hey, what's up, man? There's a drone up there. I thought they were illegal in Berkeley. Yeah. I hate those things. This makes you want to shoot it down. But probably somebody's doing some good video, maybe. How you doing? Hi. We're here as Extinction Rebellion in solidarity with all of the animals, all of the animals, humans and others, and the 70% of plants that are endangered. Um, humans are endangered. We are quite literally going to die because of the climate catastrophe if we do nothing. This is a lot of people's present, and this is also everyone on this campus's future. We've been insulated. Many of us have been insulated from the effects. Many of us have not. A lot of people on this campus are already losing people from this climate catastrophe. And I want to read the four demands of Extinction Rebellion because I think that they are important. The first demand is that the government must tell the truth about the climate and wider ecological emergency it must reverse all policies not in alignment with that position and must work alongside the media to communicate the urgency for change, including what individuals, communities, and businesses need to do. Two, the government must enact legally binding policies to reduce carbon emissions to net zero by 2025 and take further action to remove the excess of atmospheric greenhouse gases. It must cooperate internationally so that the global economy runs on no more than half a planet's worth of resources per year. Three, we do not trust our government to take the bold, swift, and long-term changes necessary to achieve these changes, and we do not intend to hand further power to our politicians. Instead, we demand a citizens' assembly to oversee the changes as we rise from the wreckage, creating a democracy fit for purpose. Four, we demand a just transition that prioritizes the most vulnerable, poor, and indigenous, the most vulnerable people, I'm reading a small font, and indigenous sovereignty, establishes reparations and remediation led by and for black people, indigenous people, people of color, and poor communities for years of environmental injustice, establishes legal rights for ecosystems to thrive and regenerate in perpetuity and repairs the effects of ongoing ecocide to prevent extinction of human and all species in order to maintain a livable, just planet for all. 
We invite everyone to join us. We are in solidarity with all animals, insects, plants, and we're trying to wake the Berkeley community up to the severity of this crisis. Yeah, that's and right. That's Thank you. Yay! So if there was an ex there was an extinction, there was a extinction, and there was a pre-extinction. Yep. I know these are the uh, the Anthropocene epoch. That is what we're living in now. That, that we've become so destructive that we've named a geological epoch after our, our species. Which so we need more speakers here. Of course. Hello, everybody. My name is Timothy Gould. Um, I wasn't planning on being here today, but I found out about this like at the very last minute while I was biking around Berkeley. But yeah, I was originally here to meet with one of my friends who goes here. But it was, it's an honor that you guys are doing it. Um, I was just like, since I have a lot of time, I feel like I should do this for a little bit. But yeah, the, we are in a climate emergency. Especially with Trump withdrawing from the Paris Climate Agreement, it provoked me so much. I mean, we do need to vote next year in 2020. Do not vote for Joe Biden because we all know that he's a huge idiot. But, but yeah, we must also get rid of diesel trains and convert to electric. We must. And we must get rid of air travel because we don't need planes as a way to get around the U.S. We have a great train system, which could be better if they're electric. I'm just going to grab the mic. It's off. Hey, thanks for having me. So one thing I could, one thing that could be noted about Extinction Rebellion is that they're a nonviolent group and they want to achieve their goals through nonviolent means. So don't expect any Molotovs. Hello. Um, I'm Avi and this is the first time I've been to a climate protest. Uh, the fires last week. Um, hey, Paul. Many of my friends had to evacuate, and I was personally affected, as I suspect many people in campus were either personally affected or new people who were. And it just made me realize how huge this thing is, and how it's already here, how climate change is already impacting us, and uh, hurting our quality of lives, and hurting people, and killing people. And it just made me realize how important uh, being out there and uh, being vocal about how climate change is affecting us and how we need to take action is. Uh, so I just want to say uh, it's my first time going to a climate protest. So uh, I think if anyone else around campus wants to join, even if you've like never protested or never protested climate change before, uh, you should. That's all. Hey. November 6th, mark the date, climate strike. Uh, hi, I'm Beatrice, and, um, you know, I'm here today because I'm genuinely concerned that we will not have a livable future. And I think we need to be clear on the reality of the climate catastrophe, which is that we as human beings caused it and we created this crisis that we are facing. And that means that it is also our responsibility and our imperative to fix it. We have all of the power. The power is in each one of you. It is about whether or not you're going to give that power to the government and to corporations who do not care about your interests or if you are going to keep that power inside of you and act for yourself. 
So I call on everybody in the UC Berkeley community, everybody on this planet, it is all of us right now or nothing. We will not have a future if all of us do not come together right now against Donald Trump, against like these neoliberal policies that are just conservative and, you know, putting profit over people's lives. So yeah, I call on everybody to, to lie down with us and to protest this. All right. I project. Yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you, everyone who shared. Um, I just wanted to say a couple more tips. A couple statistics. One in four mammals are endangered. That's 25%. You should all know that. Four are Berkeley students. Uh, it's one in eight birds are endangered. And 70% of the world's plants are endangered. And if Anyone didn't make the connection that we are mammals, we are also endangered ourselves. Um, it is really upsetting that the U.S. has okay. taken itself out of the Paris Agreement, but the Paris Agreement also doesn't put us on track for a livable future, nor does potentially the Green New Deal. Um, we need unprecedented governmental change that hasn't happened. We need a World War II scale yep. level of mobilization. And that's really our only hope. So that's why we're here not petitioning or lobbying or getting people to sign things. We're really trying to galvanize civil disobedience, which this mirrors, but we have we are not at risk for arrest. <laughs> but not yet, anyway. We need a World War II level mobilization, people. We're all going to die. That is the truth. So that's all I wanted to say. One, we know what happens at 1.5 and 2 degrees, and we're screwed if we get there. And we're definitely getting there. In fact, we're probably going to be at more hey, like game. three to five. So nice to see you. See you. That's it. Or see that you're watching. <laughs> Yeah, she was good. And she left her phone there, unfortunately, Amy. Good spokesperson there. Could have a few chants. That's what we need. And I'm just not qualified to lead the chants. I'm a journalist. But I don't want to be a journalist. I'm here as a meditator. Meditation is part of the resilient response to climate change. When we are present with what is, we are less reactive. So often I notice that people get very alarmed, they break through their denial, and they do a couple things, and then they shut down. And people open up, get through their denial, and then they shut down again. Keep the mic close to your face. This is not going to help us with an effective response. As we stay with what is, we increase our capacity through meditation to have a resilient inner experience that can sustain our focus in helping the environment and helping our fellow human beings, helping other beings around us that we share this earth with. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Yes, by the time that she said that speech, two species have died, become extinct, never more to be seen on the face of planet Earth. Think about that for a second. The people are, you know, that, that they don't realize the devastation of life that is going on right now. There's fires, massive fires all over the world that are generated by, uh, by climate change. So, uh, actually, I'm talking to people online. But uh, thank you, yeah. Thank you. I thought about it for a second. But uh, that's me. So I'll just talk to the audience here. And maybe, you know, maybe I should take up the mic more often. This is a serious time that we're living in. Don't doubt it for a second. You know, if you haven't, if you lived here in California amongst us, uh, you know, we've had several wildfires over the last few years that were directly caused by climate change. When 2,000 degree fires are burning, never have ever, has it ever burned that hot before ever in, in a fire in California that was measurable to that degree, I would imagine. Uh, you know, the one reason I haven't grabbed the mic is out of respect for the students here. I want to hear them speak first. Hi, my name is Rohan. Hi, Rohan. Um, I'm part of the animal rights group on campus. Um, I'd just like to say a word for the non-human animals that we are displacing because of climate change. These are sentient beings, people that have families and homes, and, and the fires that are burning in California are not just destroying human homes, but also the homes of the animals that have lived here for millions of years. And this is like the greatest form of disrespect. And also that on a day-to-day -day basis, we murder millions of animals for our own selfish consumption. And it is all immoral. And for a just world, for, for a world that values everybody equally, um, we need to stop animal agriculture. We need to stop exploiting animals. And we need to give animals rights and respect their habitats um, that is on the world. So thank you. Thank you. Which is true. So true that the number one cause to climate change is the the farming of these large animals like cows and pigs and it's polluting the land you know the water tables uh, like North Carolina uh, did you know that there's a dead zone um, caused by chemical fertilizers off the coast of Louisiana I mean unending plastic that's making its way into the water tables it's making its way inside of our Bibles the situation has never become more dire than it is today you know, like we keep saying and we keep telling people that this is going to take a national, international effort greater than World War II to clean and, and, and you know, restore most of the environment. The problem is, is that when species become extinct, they never, they never return. So we don't know the diversity that we're losing, the genetic diversities. Uh, we have no idea how much damage that we're causing, uh, but we do know that it is incredible and that we need to do something fast and that this system called capitalism is days are numbered because we just can't continue with this infinite consumption and infinite growth paradigm that capitalists espouse in order to maintain their power and uh, there you go there's 50 cents for you um, you know it's obvious that we're going to need a national movement it's got to grow fast you know personally uh, you know my I don't want to be pigeonholed or anything, but I think humanity is going to become extinct in, in about 150 years. And that people are, they don't really understand how precious life really is in the universe. And because uh, we're the only planet that we know of that has life on it. And there's no other planet, so there's no Mars. There's no other planets that we're going to be going to. Star Trek is just a television show. You know, it's just. So, at any rate. I don't want to get into depressing, but that's why I thought I'd come to the university here and live stream some of the, the students because I was hoping that they would, you know, they have some.
I'm here, I'm here in solidarity with the young people here at the university. Many of these young people are the same age as my grandchildren. And I am very concerned about what their life is going to be, if they're going to have a healthy and livable future. It is time that we make the big banks accountable for the amount of money that they are spending, the trillions of dollars that Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Bank of America, who are spending money, 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 money on the fossil fuel industry. We have to get people to divest and stop putting their money in the banks. They need to go into credit unions or our new public bank system. So I hope that all these young people here today will have a safe and livable future for them to grow and thrive. Right. Yeah, as many people know, uh, I've dedicated my life to uh, pres preservation of life here on okay. Earth. I think that what we should do now um, I think it's really valuable that people walking by hear from individuals why they're engaging in this action. So I think that we're going to sing a song, and while we sing the song, we're going to reorganize ourselves to be sitting in a large circle that still blocks the flat traffic through this little area. Um, that's okay with everyone. I think that's what we're going to do. So, Try from the other side. My name is Maria and I'm here because my mother put me here, Mother Earth, and we have to we have to love her and love each other radically and do it as well. That's why I'm here. My 
My name is Allison, and I'm here because I'm tired of living in fear, and I want to live in love, and seeing all these people here show up that believe in something that I believe in, that we can make a change, reminds me that there is a lot of love in this world, even though there's a lot of hard times happening. Yeah. My name is Jean. Um, I want to remind everyone that uh, this is the one year anniversary of the campfire in which 85 people died. Those 85 Sorry, people were terrorists. killed by climate change. I'm here for the front line, the ultimate front line community, namely the animals and the plants. Hi, I'm Kim, and I am here to um, encourage drawing attention to this emergency and telling the truth and speaking out to do what we can to change the direction we're going. I'm Sophia, and I'm here because we all have to do our part, and I just want to compare to my part. I'm here because this is all very upsetting, and I think sometimes we feel hopeless and sad, but I find that all of that grief and urgency becomes action and love and excitement when I come to places like this and engage with other people. Hi, I'm Tiara. I'm here today because I want to have everyone be connected to the earth show love in ways that we may not show each other in the church and everybody on the same team to identify ourselves as one versus individuals. That's really important, uh, especially in the time. I'm just another of the 7.7 7 billion names in the face of our new activism. So that I don't live in a state of hate. Every day I send loving kindness to Mr. Trump, hoping that some of it will go his way. But I know the reality is, is that we all have to get out there and vote. We all have to do our part. We have to do whatever we can. We have to demand. It's a revolution. It's absolutely a revolution. Hi, Marilyn. I'm Anna, and I'm here today because I think in order for our generation and the generation that come after us to have any sort of future, we all need to start taking action now. I'm here because I love this beautiful planet we are given and it breaks my heart to see what's happening to it. And we have to save it because nobody's going to do it for us. So we need to stand up and fight. Hi, I'm here because I can't live in denial anymore about the state of the world and about the state of my own heart and uh, checking in and seeing that I really do care about what is happening right now and feel very connected to it. And I think the denial we live in day to day, the habits we live in, beneath that there's a real love and a real caring about what is happening right now, the current state of things. My name is Jane, and I'm standing as um, 1,000 grandmothers for future generations, and also the Society of Fearless Grandmothers. Whenever the youth call out, we come, and we stand between you and whatever is an obstacle for you. If that's the police, if that's security, and no one's, we project the compassion and the love that's going to carry you 
And we need to ensure that you have a future, that the babies and the youth have a future, and that there's a future for seven generations. Please. sector, the agricultural sector, as it relates to fossil fuels. Those are the three big ones. And I just, you know, this is, you need to get out. This is a revolution. Things need to change dramatically in a way it's never happened before. And we're going to be out doing it. And I really appreciate everybody being here and doing this again. I want to see it keep growing and growing and have a thousand people here blocking this whole area. More, More than that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm here because I'm haunted by uh, the, the idea of a world filled with instead of thousands of refugees, hundreds of millions of refugees to the ecosystem. We can't prevent that. It's going to take this kind of commitment. That's what I'm here. Hi, I'm Jose. Um, I'm here because I think. So far, Bobby is not being too passive, and it has to be clarified that it's an emergency. And if suffers are not going to do anything about it, it's joining this process and it's coming here um, and sharing all this love that you will make a change. Hi, um, my name is Rohan, and I'm here because I care, and I'm so glad to be here with everybody else. Hello, my name is Judy, and I remember in 2000 spending two days watching as Al Gore lost the White House to the losing of the property by an eight-year-old affair and I don't know if you want to talk about this. All right, let's go folks. I'm trying to get a good angle on this. a little bit already about how the wildfires really woke me up to um, the uh, disaster and the crisis that we're facing right now with climate change. Um, and just, I want to have a future for myself and everyone younger than me and everyone who uh, <coughs> hasn't been born yet, but like, will have to face a world, future generations who will have to face a world that was once so beautiful and incredible, and I think the thought of taking that away uh, is devastating and horrible, and I think we need to stand up uh, for the earth and everyone in it. My name is Lane, and I'm here in support of Thank you. 
Well, she could speak up. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi everyone, my name is Timothy Gould. Um, I'm here for all of you guys, even though I found out about this at the last minute, but I'm here because a good man named Stephen Hawking says that if we don't act, Earth could be as hot as like 250 degrees, in case you don't have not noticed what that before his death. That's what he said. My God. First lesson, hold the mic closer to your mouth. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm here <coughs> to wake people up because I know that when it comes to protesting or speaking out about your opinions, it's very scary, especially being a person of color. So being here is for my people and to wake people up because it's time to protest and it's time to make change. Hey, okay, I'm Jack. Um, I'm here to shed some light on this very important issue and just help us as a people and species and just the inhabitants of this earth to help create a more sustainable future and transcend this really primitive state of fear and this other destruction that we want to be for everyone's for our earth and our each other. Eve of Destruction. That's a good song for this. Eve of Destruction. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Hi, my name is Ella. Um, this is my first Extinction Rebellion. Uh, Yay. Um, I'm really uh, honored. I'm humbled to be here. I'm humbled to see the turnout. Um, and I'm also excited to see more people show up. We have 30,000 undergraduate students on this campus. Y'all. 10,000 graduate students? Where are they? Where, where are y'all? You know? And I, I feel it. I woke up this morning and I felt in denial. I woke up in denial. I woke up um, thinking maybe I should go to class instead. And then I realized, and that's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to choose to not go to class, right? But um, to be here and to be able to speak up on a campus with a legacy of freedom of speech with a legacy of disruption and civil disobedience and transcending above whatever BS um, prohibits us from moving forward together. Um, and I'm really feeling the power of us together as a movement. And I also am holding um, the, the memory of my younger cousin, Leo. Um, and uh, and my action here today is um, for him and his future and our futures. Uh, I'm Beatrice, and I want to echo what some of my comrades said. This is also like kind of my first XR action, and you know I'm really excited to get into it because um, I think. Uh, and as I was saying before, something you heard, like, it is all of us or nothing. We all have to come together. And so I'm here in solidarity with everybody. Uh, and I'm here for my own life and for all sentient beings who deserve life and love and happiness on this planet. So 
thank you all for being here today. to have a persistent, focused approach to climate change. And I'm finding that meditation is helping me be present with what is in a sustainable way. So I invite people to consider that possibility. And um, there is something that has been a problem for me to be sustainable in my approach, which is feeling powerless and as if it doesn't matter, my small effort. Don't underestimate the power of pulling your credit card out of Wells Fargo or yeah. Citibank or Bank of America. It, this is something simple that each one of us can do. We can check when our friends are taking out their credit cards. We can look at where our money is and the banks do respond to whether they're considered safe banks. Wells Fargo is not a safe bank in the, in the way they are investing money Jamie against Diamond all of the oh, jackass. living beings well, he's there, the CEO they're of keeping the fossil was fuel the other industry day. going. So do not underestimate the power of a small action that you can do every day is keeping your eyes out. You've got to go to the big banks, speaking to your friends, and, uh, and it also helps our local underclass Folks, if we are investing in our credit unions, because they will loan money to the lower class folks. So, so um, I pass on my. Hello, I'm Joan, and I'm here as a meditator uh, with all of you um, for my children, my grandchildren, and all of our, all of our all the beings and all the sentient beings in all the universe, that we all may really be happy and at our ease. And at this point, there's no time but the present. So please join us in. Hello, I'm Marianne. Just happy to be here and wonderful to see young faces. Not so young face so encouraging you all to do whatever it is that moves you, yes, but you may all be there for us. Um, stop eating animals. <laughs> whatever moves you to do, whatever will sustain you, that you can stay with doing. If you want to do legislation, do legislation. Whatever you can stay with doing, do it. And at the risk of being provocative, I just wish that there were more people in my age cohort here today. Yeah, no doubt. Unfortunately, my age cohort talks too much and it's too little. So it's time to change. To all the old people, all, all the people of my generation, get your friends and family out because it's the ultimate act of not being selfish. Did you hear that, family? I'm out here because I'm not selfish. All right. Hello. My name is Agnes. Thank you all for coming. I know who you all are in truth and in freedom. I know what you all are in truth and in freedom. I know how you all serve in truth 
You are saying, You are saying, You are saying, You are saying. I'm going to sing a brief chant calling on the power of the sun. I have taken for granted the sun and the power of life and the power of what we do here every day. The sun, morning sun, come my way, come my way. Morning sun, come my way. Take my pain, take my pain down below, down below, down below, down below, cool waters down below. Calling on all the archangels and the angels and the ascended masters. Calling Ganesh and Buddha and Krishna, all of the saints and sages, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, calling the highest powers of the universe now to come into the center of the circle and witness, to activate the 12 rays and flames of Christ consciousness here in the center of Berkeley, in the center of each of our hearts and each of our lives, in the center of the planet. Thank you, Divine Son. We're coming into each of our crowns now, into our hearts, all the way down to the center of the earth, and illuminating us to the truth of who we are in every moment. We are divine love, we are divine peace, we are divine wholeness, we are divine compassion, we are divine perfection in every moment. And may it be so that every person on the planet right now receives this blessing through this part of the Ascended Masters and all the angels and archangels. May everyone be blessed now in this moment, literally, through the power of the Universal Christ Consciousness, the power of the Supreme God, the power of the, of the beautiful Son. Thank you, Central Sun, for being in our hearts and illuminating every aspect of our lives. We are grateful. We bow to you. Thank you, Mother Earth, for receiving this light and grounding us to the center of life. Thank you for our daily food and water. Uh -huh. oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Sadie. I'm here from XRSF Bay. Um, I'm here today because I have this sense of compassion and empathy for those who don't have a choice but to be involved in the climate emergency that is occurring right now. Most of us, I assume, are here by choice. Most of us didn't have you know, parents who forced us to be here. You know, it's an elective class. But I, I think that it's important to stand up uh, in solidarity for those who are being affected right now by the climate emergency, by the frontline communities, like nature, like marginalized communities. I think that we're lucky to have the choice to take action without being affected by the actions of others. Thank you guys for being here. Hi, my name is Sammy. Um, I'm here because there's strength in numbers. The time to act is now. This is my home. This is our home. We gotta do something about it. Yeah. Um, I'm Hunter and I'm here because between the choices of facing the long-term consequences of our actions as a society and as just our economy, the way we have it structured, uh, that seems rising, rising up and taking action seems like a much more logical answer to that than whether most of the animals, plants, and I think we hold deer but still. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm here because we've known about anthropogenic climate change for decades, and we failed to act. That's on my generation, Generation X, and the boomers. So I have an obligation to be here. I'm also here for my friends, the redwood trees, the monarch butterflies, the bumblebees, the three million, billion, sorry, three billion birds that disappeared between 1970 and this year. Like they just didn't exist. So I'm here to 
for those birds. And I'm here for my seven-year-old daughter and her kids and her grandkids. I want her to be a college student in a, in, on this campus where California is not burning and where California has water and where she can get an education without fear for her future and then grow up and help plan her family the way she wants and think about her grandkids. I want that to be her safe and viable future and I want that for all the students who are here now. And I know we have to ask now to make that happen. Thank you. A lot of good words there. Yay! A lot of good words there. Hello, I'm Shannon, and I'm skipping class to be here. Woo! Yeah. 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 And I, I feel really privileged and honored to be here with all of you, and I think it's really important to take action and get our taking classes at this moment. Um, and I want to speak out for all of the non-human animals and humans as well. And we got to protect all life on this planet. Hello, everyone. My name is Rocky, and I'm from the Bright Action Everywhere San Francisco Bay Area chapter. And I'm here today in support of Extinction Rebellion. Um, and I am so glad to see all of you out here today. Um, you know, I grew up at a time in the 2000s where, you know, to solve, like, we known about, like, climate change and global warming, and, you know, the most popular choice to, like, deal with it at this time, at least from where I was from with, like, you know, uh, consumerism, like, we could, like, buy our way, like, buying our super products, you know, to solve the climate crisis, and, you know, here we are today, you know, like, uh, fast forward to 2019, the world is still, uh, the world, the temperature is rising, the world is burning, and, you know, it's pretty clear now that, like, consumers are not going to be our way out. It's taking direct action. And, and, um, direct and also to echo uh, Shane's, uh, you know, direct actions, action. You know, um, you know, I'm also here for, you know, the for all of the humans around the world, the non-human animals, and for our environment and future generations. <laughs> Uh, so how incredibly honored I am to be in this group of people. You're so brave for being here. And I want to note that this is not always popular what we're doing. There is a political establishment on this campus that believes that the only legitimate way to make change is to be smart enough to go to law school. Yeah! And, and the people here are challenging that notion because I think the real brilliant thing, we, we, when you look at history, disruption works, direct action works, challenging the power structure works. It's not going to law school, it's not going to Cal, that's a good thing to do. But once you're in Cal, go out there, disrupt, go do some direct action. So if instead of going to law school, go. If you want to do that, great, you can help the world that way. But another brilliant thing to do is doing what works, and direct action works. So thank you for being here. I'm excited to be here. I'm sure there are people here, with some thank you for the other folks in the audience. I'm sure some of y'all have been arrested, whether it's anti-war or, or civil rights activism. My friend Rocky here has been arrested at least four or five times for anti-factory farming protests. And I see a wave of a generation that is increasingly willing to put themselves on the line to say that I'm not just going to do it all on an exam, I'm going to put my body on the line, I'm going to make a sacrifice, and I'm going to do what works because the animals need us, the humans need us, your daughter needs us. Thank you for sharing her story, and I know that we're going to throw it down for her, and we're going to save this world together. Thank you. Positive message. Yeah, yeah. I am just Brian Liu. I oh just Brian. I don't have as much of uh, a great um, saying things personality as these, but um, I'm also here for like direct action and for like all the animals. Um, like uh, I guess my experiences at, uh, as an animal rights activist and like um, trying to Trying to go the teacher route, being a teacher, informs us that like we need to invest in the future generation, whether it be uh, like humans from like whatever social economic background and animals from like wherever they may live on Earth in the sea, and we need to invest in the future generation, and we we need to uh, promote science and like and science is not not just like on its own. It's integrated with direct action. Like, direct action thrives on uh, 
like knowledge and knowledge thrives on like applying that knowledge so yeah for for all the animals and uh, and for all the animals homes I'm here because I'm mad. <clears throat> um, we, we are dying. Like, our resources are dwindling. We don't have enough for everyone in this world. And our population is increasing at an exponential rate that, like, we don't have enough for everyone. And if everyone just keeps using things, like they're just trash, and keeps throwing away things and throwing it in the ocean, we're not going to have anything left. We need, we need to start thinking about what we're doing and how we're using things. And think about how the way we use things affects other people. I'm here, I'm here for the, the Thomas fire and the Getty fire, and the McKincaid fire, and the Dakota pipeline, and the, the, uh, I don't know, the, every, every major climate crisis event that's happened in the past couple of years shows that this is not normal, and we need to make a change. Thank you. Um, my name is Adam. Um, I'm, in, I'm here in solidarity with the uh, the People's Park struggle, um, and I'm here also because you know time is running out for the great masses of poor people, the great masses of uh, third world people, and we really do need a change. And thank you all for being here. Hi everyone, my name is Lady 
Parliament House and the State Bank Parliament. Uh, I'm here primarily uh, to Take it up. People's Park. Yeah, uh, it. I ran for office last year for City Council. Uh, my goal was environmental justice, and that means first and foremost to say that we are on a lonely land. Uh, we have to protect those of us who are indigenous uh, to this community. Uh, that uh, my, my studies essentially came from understanding the United Nations and looking at uh, small island developing states. So it's one of the first uh, communities to be impacted by the, uh, the climate crisis. Uh, but if you look over what's happening everywhere, it's about land grabs. And so what we have in Berkeley is a bunch of developers who are making market and housing, stealing our land, stealing our community uh, settlements, and trying to take it away and get people to have um, so my challenge for you today is that um, you have an opportunity to act at the local level. All right, um, some people have identified I gotta let you go. Like Battery power is starting to get low. Anyway, much but love, much peace. And we'll be back again soon. This is Clark Sullivan signing off.